Yeah, I'm gonna try and not get too preachy on this. Um, Charles was just talking about protesting, and I'm not sure where he's going with that, but we'll we'll figure it. Out. I'm just gonna just guess, just gonna get into it. A lot of people say, <coughs> "Does protesting work? Does protesting work? Do you know that the fact that we have a weekend was a result of people protesting?" No. So, protesting works. In order, like even even Occupy Wall Street, people say it doesn't work. It didn't work. When you look at the individual thing, and I was I was at Occupy Wall Street for two hours. I went down there. I I saw it was out there. I mean, I was waiting for that thing for the longest period of time. It goes into New York. It gets to San Diego. I go out there. It had been out there a couple of days. I'm sitting there, and the, it was real tense. I'm sitting there. I'm like, what's going on here? And then all of a sudden, they go on a march and they go. They're talking about the banks. They're chanting something about the banks. And I'm just like, the banks? I go, that was like three years ago. They're chanting about the banks, about what went on. I was like, we're chanting right now? And then I was like staying back because back, some people marched and pe- some people were like taken off the square. They were staying there. And I looked and I go, these people were willing to die. And I was like, oh, I'm kind of the bridge because I used to be in financial services and now I'm the hippie. I'm the bridge. I go, anybody who gets shot, it's going to be me. I'm like the, the connector between the two sides of this. I'm getting, my black ass is getting out of here. I don't want to chant about something that, that, that I mean, it's, it seemed like a waste of energy. I like, I'm going to get out of here. Um, but later... I'm getting preachy, jumping at any time. But later, I, I went to a protest and I talked to this guy, Michael Brooks, that was running for Congress, and he was inspired to run for Congress. He worked for the federal government for 30 years in the fish and game type, type stuff. And Michael Brooks was inspired to run to con- for Congress based on Occupy Wall Street. I was involved in a group that was helping people save their, their homes. I'm a group, one of my friends, Rose, whose who's, uh, husband owns a law firm. Many groups of people that were ripples from the Occupy Wall Street. When you look at the micro, lots of times with protests you don't see anything happen. When you look at the macro, step out of your comfort zone, step out of your ego, step out of your cause and effect. I see this, it needs to be exactly something like this. When you step out those worlds, you can actually see that protests do work if you take the word pro professional Mm -hmm. and test the protesters are really just to get use raw emotions and just go there a lot of professionals just like to do stuff and like suck all the energy out of what's going on and like to like formulate some stuff instead of creating from words like love compassion humility Mm -hmm. okay Hmm. Want another example? Always. And we're, and, and we're gonna get into this. We're gonna we're gonna see this. We're gonna see, we're gonna we're gonna do some actual stuff here in Texas. Um, last year, I was at a protest, and it was based on how farm workers were treated in Mexico. So I'm protesting in the U.S. and. Second protest, I went to one, kind of wasn't totally feeling it. Some things felt like they were true, some things didn't feel like they were true, but I was there. I'm always willing to be out there standing up for people. I, I always have to have some redeeming quality of what I'm doing or... To have some type of meaning. Yeah, there's got to be some type of meaning meaning there. Maybe I'm going to meet somebody, whatever, whatever the case is. So in a video, the second time I went was a protest at a Whole Foods, Whole Foods in... Uh, at Hillcrest, California, and I'm at the protest, and someone sees me, and we t- do a video. So that was on a Friday. We do a video. It's 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 online. Did I didn't do any video editing or, or anything? I chanted some stuff with the the rest of the people, but I didn't do I didn't speak at the event or anything. One of my friends from high school spots me in the video. He ends up that he's the president of the company. 
after a month and a half of negotiating back and forth, he invites me down there. I meet for, with five executives from, from the U.S., five executives from Mexico. And I was able to really engage what was going on there. We went down there for two days. Mm-hmm. And I learned most of what was going on from the driver of, of, of for the, the, the company that I was protesting. And I went down there and cool thing, I did a video. As soon as I found out Occupy Wall Street, before I had a chance to go down there, I did a video that I said, hey, people on the streets, if you had a chance to sit down and talk to the president of the company, what would you say to him? What would you say to a president of a company of a bank? Would you give him demands? Nobody likes demands. And if they do fix your demands, if they do fix your demands, what they do is they, they mess something up over here. Mm-hmm. Because nobody likes demands. Don't make demands. Are you going to be able to sit down and talk with them? I did that. And I was able to go back after that trip because I felt like the company really wanted to do something, really was doing something, but they were a little out of touch. No, to make a cause and to effect. Correct. Correct. They were a little out of touch on that, and we were able to engage that. And then I went down and stayed with the, the, the farm workers. And based on that whole experience, I was able to talk a young lady down there, spending, spending three, three <coughs> hours with her on my second trip down there. I was able to, and to talk her into a school that already exists, and I didn't know about this protest 365 days ago. She already started a school because the protesters were complaining down there that a five-year-old burnt down his house and died. And he, this five-year-old was actually watching one of his younger siblings, but it turns out just the five-year-old had died. And the protesters wanted blood for this. And I go, that's, that's very sad. It's very sad that a five-year-old did that because both of his parents worked, but that's not the company's fault. Mm-hmm. But the company can take ownership and instead of getting mad instead of wanting blood from the company instead of like just trying to make the my friend that was the president of the company feel bad or the executives feel bad i did talk to him about it but i didn't feel they wanted to take ownership and towards a solution not a formulated highbrow figure out profitable bottom line type of, of thinking or dealing with these these Ivy Leaguer type people have organizations that come down there and like, oh, let's, let's create a, a study for the future impact type there. We're working with this organization. No, I was able to get to, Jedi Siege, my nickname, I was able to get into the center of what was going on and find the vulnerability of what it is in this young lady was having trouble, was in the middle of a transition. She had already started one school down there and she didn't feel she was making an impact. And I was able to connect with her with love, compassion, and humility. Three hours on the beach, bought her lunch. I mean, the, the lunch the lunch was like 20 bucks. For, I think it was 10 bucks for both of us. Like nothing, it didn't take paying a lot of things and we just connected and that transition was able to talk her into starting another school each school has about a uh, hundred and something students it's a hundred people that, that have a, that get an education but also they're they're not out on the streets and everything like that and that's all based on a protest mm-hmm even coming with the Occupy Wall Street. There's many, many ripples and causes effect and everything. And I think that's happening. I'm not the only one that's doing it. I wish it could, I wish it could be more. I'll be perfectly honest. So, um, based on that, I have put myself in a position that protesting is so crucial and important. And I got a little bitter of, of how it ended. this 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 one in Mexico ended up, and I said I was like Cap- capitalism's my way of protesting. It's like creating something, inspiring something. Um, a lot of s- students that are socialists complain about about capitalism, but the education system is one of the most capitalistic. Uh, it's crony capitalism. Mm-hmm. 
It's and they don't teach you anything that you actually need to know to actually survive. They teach you the mathematics and basically the history and the biology of how life occurred into the past or how we can view it. But how do, do they tell us how to actually live into this world, like after school? No. It's it, a lot of that's up to the up, up to the student, but it, it is it is based on the the. Yeah, they can go into farther thinking. Just it's based on them surviving. Off. It's based on them surviving. It's based on it's based on that old model surviving, it, and and we each have to look at survival from our standpoint. Yes, that's 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 important, but also a corporation is like a human. The IRS looks at a corporation like a human. <laughs> And the corporation wants to survive. We want to survive. But can can we be in a place that we're not totally focused? Our survival is helping humanity. Well, okay. So, a little louder. Um, one one view that I could ask you: Do you think it's better to have police action with riot shields? Horses and batons, smoke gas, tear gas. Do you think that's actually calming down a situation and millions of people are seeing this and it's just adding fire to a fuel? Like, what What if we took out the officers during a pe- what's supposed to be a peaceful protest, but then you get tear gas thrown in your eyes and people can't see? People get antsy. People get in fear. Like, I feel like that's kind of like what has caused more of these shootings like Dallas or Virginia Tech or Aurora you know I have never heard I haven't heard anyone talk about Aurora movie theater since that happened like after they found that person they basically put that under the rug and so all these college shootings have happened and now Berkeley they're they're talking about fighting for the freedom of speech and not immigration right that's I think that's what Berkeley was doing. For, for Berkeley was a, the freedom of speech. They they actually had a, a guy that his name's Milo, and he's uh, convert. He's he's like he's he's a conservative. He he um, is like Trump. How he he gets the the audience riled up. Um, but I I actually I actually like Milo. And not necessarily from his factual things. I like that he makes people think, and he throws stuff from a, a dis- different avenue, like a third party. A third party. party. But I, I also know that he's trying to elicit a certain response, mm-hmm. and he's getting that response. And and uh, yeah, so that's that's yeah, that's another uh, transition for for a lot of the things that are going on. We're gonna say something. So, so from there, I'm, <clears throat> I'm looking at protesting with what, what, whatever the essence of what I was. I studied capitalism. I was in business for a longest period of time. I'll give you an example that you said about the the Aurora theater shooting. During the Aurora theater shooting. I hang out around this certain college campus and everything, and a lot of the people are worried about me, even though I have a clean record. I pretty much virtually went to the same places all the time. I never had one student complain when there's lots of stuff going on on, on campus. Um, but during the Aurora, after the Aurora shooting, the stress levels for me, as them thinking as a target, went up tenfold. Mm-hmm. I could feel it. I could feel it, and just like being around, I almost was gonna walk in the police station and just say, "Hey, here's my ID. Do a background check. Let's have a conversation, type thing." But I'm like, only a. I've always had this philosophy, or I've had this philosophy since I became more conscious. Only, only a guilty person defends himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because an innocent man doesn't have to fight because he knows that he didn't do anything. Yeah. But the guilty always stray away and try to cover up and say that that's wrong. 
that so so uh, that's true. And it's the mi- it's a mindset. You could be pro- projected, pro- projecting the, the the guiltiness. And 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 for one of the things that helped me survive so much on <laughs> campus was I don't I didn't care if people had thoughts about me. I didn't care um, about uh, about that. I mean, it was limited, and it was putting a lot of those people that I could have been in the position to to help them because I had people that were. Uh, on the other side of it and thought I was that and then just in one conversation with me it was a, they were able to change their, their whole demeanor and dynamic so from that stress I there was a one police officer that always came in and he was the one police officer on campus uh, that engaged me a lot of them would like just like be around me and they wouldn't they wouldn't engage me so there was like one or two here and here and there this this one guy came in one day as Officer Mike, and he he came in one day and he didn't have a bulletproof vest on. I'm like, Officer Mike doesn't have a bulletproof vest on, and he's like, all the stress went down. It's because you felt like he wasn't he wasn't protected just like you. But it's but it's he wasn't protected. Still had still had the gun. Didn't have the bulletproof vest on. Trust, trust me. This campus isn't. There's, 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 there's stuff going on there. Students committing suicide. It's a. It's thirty-five thousand students. Sixty thousand people come on the campus a day. There's stuff that's happening, but it's not a dangerous place. Yeah. Um. But, real short on that, that place that isn't a dangerous place, is listed in the top, most dangerous, college campuses. And the reason why is because it's good to be on that list because it's, it's, it's a cash cow. You can hire more police. The boosters can raise millions and millions of dollars saying for, for buildings, for, for equipment, for departments to keep the school safe. Mm-hmm. It's a cash cow. Yeah. And, and I, I, my understanding, and I sent this to the, the president of the, the sorry, the, the highest level executive, the chief of police, of the campus, so he's he's in charge of of, of this sixty thousand people a day community and in charge of thirty police officers, and I said I said to him about the cash cow and everything, but what I did as a protest, I came up with the idea with a, of a, 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 a 